Hey everybody, it's Mike Young, lifestyle nutritionist. Welcome to Chapter Seventy Nine, lifestyle nutritionist with a plant a plant based diet dot org. And I'm happy because I'm going to upset a lot of you with this chapter. I know, I know you're not going to be happy. And I kind of pushed this off. I didn't want to put this in the very beginning. I wanted to think about how what I was going to say, how I was going to say it. I've got a few notes here on my phone. If you're wondering why I'm looking at this thing, I need to make sure I don't forget about saying anything here in chapter 79 on alcohol, alcohol, AKA in most cases, spoiled plants. All right. That's what it is. It's plants. Oh, it's plants. Come on. You're eating plant-based. And no, we, well, we want you, if you've been following so far to have plants that are as close to colorfully ripened, fruits and vegetables, etc., on the plant, pick it and eat it. That is the absolute best way to do it. If you think about it from that perspective, alcohol being the spoiled version of the plant is the furthest thing away because you wouldn't even, most of the stuff that's used for alcohol, it's so rancid, fermented, whatever. I don't think rancid is even the right word to use here with plants. But you wouldn't even want to touch it if it wasn't uh, made into alcohol. It, I know that it's kind of like the animal product industry where they say, oh, we use all parts of the pig, you know, which is disgusting. Okay, the whole thing's disgusting. But you can say the same about plants. Well, you don't need to use this stuff, by the way, for plants in the, in the, uh, in the alcohol form. You can just compost it at that point. Okay, that's best. Just compost it. Do not skip over this whole alcohol thing. Now, why? First off, if you've listened to a chapter earlier in the book, you know that alcohol is classified as a group one, highest level cancer causing for sure carcinogen. All right, group one carcinogen. <laughs> I, I know it's hard to believe because like American Cancer Society and other plate, other things, people with benefits, breast cancer, these little pink ribbon things, they're all serving alcohol. It doesn't make any sense, does it? No, it doesn't. It's like, they, it's like, it's like a kid in the candy shop, they're just luring you in with it, okay? They've got some, you know, I know women and especially millennials have this big romance about wine. Wine is so great. It's great marketing. I don't know who did this. I, I, I drive around and you know, there's wineries all over the place. And when they show wineries, sometimes in some places like in Northern Virginia, I've seen many of these signs, they just show a bundle of grapes on the side sign. Like, like this is great. Just get your grapes. This is the, the, the message we're sending is this is nutritious. This is a fruit. This is like, there's some ripe, ripe grapes. Just We just picked them off the plant. Don't you want these? But the reality is what they're serving you is the perverted version of those grapes. It's the worst version of those grapes that they can possibly get. And it causes cancer. It's a carcinogen. And I would love to go to these wineries. I wish they can convert them all to just organic grape growing places where I can pick vine ripened grapes right off of the plant and eat them all organic. I would love that. I would love that. Maybe one day, that's my vision, that these wineries will turn to that. The cideries will also be, you know, for apples or whatever else they're putting in the cider, the peaches, uh, the distilleries, the breweries the, with the hops. I don't, I don't think there's much use for hops. Okay. I don't think I would even want any. Uh, all right. Well, let's get, okay. What about health benefits, Mike? I hear all the time, red wine, resveratrol, right? And actually, I even took some of the supplements for a while. And by the way, no supplements. See my chapter on supplements if you don't know why they cause cancer as well. But yes, res resveratrol, I believe, is beneficial to you. I used to actually drink grape juice. There was a period of time, too, like, let me give my own personal story, where, where I did not drink alcohol. I just stopped on my own. Nobody asked me to for 13 years. And actually, at the time when I did stop, people said, well, why'd you stop? And of course, no one made me stop. No one even suggested that I stop. But I recognize that it wasn't helping anything. Because you know, you know, if you're watching this, that probably the majority of your awful, like most terrible decisions ever were made after you had started to consume some alcohol. All right, because it, it really does impair judgment in a very bad way. And of course, many people binge drink or can't, can't, uh, I don't know, they, they don't function well. I don't even function well after alcohol, really. I've known that since the early, early days, but you know, you see everybody else who's an adult saying, oh, we're laughing, we're having a good time. Everybody says, well, yeah, it's a social lubricant, which I guess it is, because but why don't you just work on your social skills when you're sober? You know, I mean, maybe in the past, it was hard to do that. It was really expensive with a lot of therapy, but there's, there's YouTube videos all over the place on this. There's, there's resources on the internet for free. You don't have to worry about this anymore. You can work on that. So the whole social lubricant thing, 
like I said, in the past, okay, well, maybe, you know, only the privileged get to work on their social skills without alcohol. The rest of us have to use alcohol to get us to talk to somebody or whatever it is, okay? And I'm an introvert. I can say this. Like I said, I can say this a number of reasons. I stopped on my own for 13 years. And by the way, when I did stop, most people who approached me and asked me what the hell is going on, they were basically like, you don't have a problem. And you know why? They were telling me I don't have a problem because they knew that they were way worse than me. And if I had to stop, then man, they really, they really should be stopping themselves, if you know what I'm saying. I hope that here in 2022, when I'm 52 years young here, that we can talk about this and I won't get attacked. And actually, I don't think I will. But it wasn't more than a few decades ago where if you started talking like this, you were some kind of freak and you had to or should have gone to AA and you just, I don't know, you can't handle it. You can't handle your liquor, so you shouldn't drink it because you can't handle it. But nobody should be having this stuff. All right, let me know too while you're listening to this. Are you drinking alcohol? Like I said, I will have a glass here and there. Still, I want to get rid of it completely. I should get rid of it completely. But just like anything else, if you're doing 95% compliance, it's okay to have a treat every once in a long while. Okay? Forget this concept of moderation. Don't say, yeah, I'm like, I'll just do moderate. No, 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 no. Every once in a long, long while, you can have some junk, which is what alcohol is. It's junk food. All right? Where's the fiber in alcohol? It's not there. They take it all out, take all the nutrition out, and they add cancer. The, the, the alcohol component, the chemical alcohol will and does cause cancer in humans. The only question is how long is it going to take? I know your grandfather drank till he's 95, had a shot of whiskey every day, and he still lived. Okay, great. He could have lived to maybe 195. If he's that hardy. I, I, I don't know how hardy you are or how hardy I am, but I know, again, the, the, whole, the whole purpose of this book is tell me the habits. Tell me what I got to do. What will help to increase my longevity, optimize my health, give me the best chance of staying alive as long as I can and with as few problems as I can so I can have as much fun as I can. I know that most people will consider like, alcohol is fun and if you're not having alcohol, you are boring. That's not true, okay? The, what's true is you're probably way better off. And what's true is that people who think that and really believe that they probably use alcohol as a crutch in their lives and they're probably alcoholics. That's the thing, nobody ever admits they're an alcoholic. Think about this for a minute. You, uh, write it in the comments below. Have you ever had somebody actually just admit on their own, hey, I'm an alcoholic? I'm not talking about somebody that's an AA because once they get the AA, they've already done that. That's great. I don't want to stop that. I'm talking about outside of that. Nobody ever talks about this. Nobody ever wants to talk about this. <laughs> if anybody ever talks about alcoholic when you're out on a night drinking, it's a joke. Oh, it's a joke. Oh gosh, I'm an alcoholic. No one's ever seriously talking and having an intervention with somebody about this stuff. But let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say. All right. Now, what's uh, more connections with this alcohol society? It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. This is the problem. This is the problem with alcohol. It's the most dangerous and it's a legal drug. Most dangerous drug and most legal because it's habitual. It, it happens. Most people who drink alcohol drink alcohol every day. I don't like the, I don't like the fact that they say just drink. No, drinking some things is okay, like water. But Drinking alcohol is the problem. It becomes a habit and it's not good, not good at all. In my definition, anybody who is consuming this on a daily or almost daily basis, or anybody that needs it to have fun or some combination of that, got a problem. You just need to stop. You should stop anyway. It has nothing to do with that anymore. There's too much evidence out there. All right, number one profit center in restaurants is alcohol, alcohol sales. Number one profit center. So if you see a restaurant that doesn't sell alcohol, that could be selling it, you might want to ask them why. Because they might actually care that they don't want to, I don't know, um, promote bad habits. Uh, I know that's not very common these days. Usually people in the industry want to promote bad habits because it's very, very profitable for them. Very profitable. Or maybe they care about your health. Because I do see a future where restaurants are the examples of what to do for your health rather than the enablers of your bad habits, which is what they are now. Of course, like I said, I talked about bad decisions. I talked about impaired, I didn't talk about it yet, impaired driving. Most of the time it's alcohol, okay? Accidents, deaths, so many, so much terrible, terrible stuff. And it, it's so easy to happen. Alcohol, it can be bought everywhere. You go into the grocery stores, even like I think about the Wegman stores I've been in, 
and, and the Harris Teeter, the alcohol section is massive. There's so many bottles of everything there. And like I said, anytime you go into any grocery store, you shouldn't be eating almost everything that's in there. Again, the 80-20 principle we talk about so much, only like 20% of what's in these grocery stores maximum you should even be buying. And the shrine, the worshiping of alcohol, is just crazy. You know, people have bars in their houses. They got all this memorabilia of all the drinks that they've had, all, all, all the alcohol consumed. And I understand, too, that in the past, this may have been required. I don't know. I didn't live back in the day when we didn't have electricity or refrigeration. And, you know, I can only imagine trying to keep certain foods, plants, whatever, juices, if they were having, which is less than optimal, but still way, way better than alcohol, trying to keep them okay. Kind of, uh, the alcoholic version can't really go bad. You see these alcohol bottles just in room temperature all the time, right? I think my theory is, well, you know, let's say back in the Bible, back in Jesus's day, talk about drinking wine. Everybody just drank. These are the, the drinks that they had. Well, that's probably because it was very hard to purify water. They didn't have a clean source of water. And then alcohol, alcohol kills everything like it does your gut bacteria. And it's stable. You can, you can keep it. It makes sense to me why at a certain point of development in society that alcohol would be a drink that people would have, most people would have. And of course, the, the, the buzz or whatever the, that people get and the, the social lubricant, that's just a, a secondary thing. But after a while, it becomes the primary thing. When you go from generation to generation drinking alcohol, you know, like fetal alcohol syndrome. Uh, I actually, I'm going to put this phone down. I saw like in West Virginia, my wife and I, Denise, were in West Virginia recently. And they're, they are required to have a sign wherever you sell alcohol, apparently, it seems that way to me, that says that alcohol causes fetal alcohol syndrome and causes all kinds of issues for your child, like ongoing issues. They know this. And I guess a lot of people in West Virginia, I don't know, do that. Uh, or there's a bigger problem there, or at least the legislature got enough had enough clout to pass that, but they have a sign up, but they, I get, it looks like they have to have a sign where, wherever they sell the alcohol, but it's usually way back in the corner where nobody can see it. It's kind of funny when I, when I did find one of those that it was way back in the corner where nobody could see it. Yeah. Birth defects, all kinds of things. Like when the mother's drinking alcohol, of course it, it compromises you. It, it totally pulls back your immune system during the time that you are consuming the alcohol and you're under the effect of it, the buzz and it affects you on a cellular level, it affects your eggs. If you're carrying eggs as a female, you know, uh, if you're a male, the sperm, I'm sure are affected by that alcohol and it's all bad. None of that stuff is good. Have you ever heard of any good things? I mean, and if, and if you know that it's bad intrinsically and you know that, well, gosh, if someone's gonna get pregnant, they should probably not be drinking alcohol. Although that's probably how a lot of conceptions happen. Uh, well, that's not the subject of this video, but they, they shouldn't be drinking alcohol. They should be probably abstaining for a period of time then why are you why is it okay for you to drink this as an adult why, why is it okay it's not you know i mean we don't we don't want to do any harm to anybody and i like i said i i kind of gave my own little abbreviated history of the world as to how alcohol kind of would make sense to me that it would become ingrained in society but look this is 2022 when i'm recording this video all the information is out there i know that most people use the internet for bad reasons rather than good at this point in time, but I'm also hopeful that will change. But um, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just the sheep theory, right? It's peer pressure. It's the five people you surround yourself with the most. Don't hang out with people that are always drinking alcohol all the time, that romance it and worship alcohol. They have a shrine in their house called a bar, or they go to the alcohol shrine, go out to it, a bar, or any restaurant for that matter that has a bar in it or serves alcohol. They know that you'll impair your judgment. You'll order more food. In addition to the high profit uh, items of alcohol, you're going to order more food and other beverages and maybe a second drink and all this other stuff. And like I said, you're going to end up with cancer. That's the real issue. Cancer, destroy your gut health. Alcohol, you know that they do use to sterilize tools before going into the operating room. The medical industry has legit use for alcohol. But you can only imagine if they're using straight up alcohol for that, which is in your drink, only watered down unless you're drinking grain alcohol, it's going to kill off shit in your body that shouldn't be killed off. You're gonna get, uh, uh, it's kind of like salt effect on the, on the stomach, cancer in the, in the stomach. You know, you're going to destroy all that gut bacteria. How are you ever going to be okay mentally? See my chap see the previous two, two chapters ago about mental health. It's going to throw all that out of balance. If your gut health is 
required for good brain health and good mental health, you've got to recognize the biggest destroyers of gut health. And this is absolutely one of them. Okay. Uh, high fat foods is another sodium we talked about um, alcohol. There are others, but also just a lack of fiber in the diet. Cause if you keep bringing fiber back in, even if you've done damage with the alcohol, and of course, liver, people with liver cancer, people who kill off their livers. <laughs> it's a joke. I know it's a joke when you're out on Saturday night, <laughs> you're going to kill off my liver. People do. And it's a slow, painful death. You got all these other symptoms. You can't quite figure out what's going on, can you? But I know it's, it's somewhat complicated, but also so simple. You just need to think. You've got, you're a human. You've got a brain. You're not an animal. You don't have to just go along with, all, with the pack or the sheep herd of sheep that are doing their thing and that's why i'm releasing this if this resonates with you please hit that like button give me some comments below i want to hear your story because like i said i stopped for 13 straight years because I, and i'll tell you uh straight up the main reason i stopped when i did which was 1994 i think that's right right 1990 no four five six somewhere in that i can't even remember such a long time ago was that I was having issues in my marriage and I thought, well, there's no way this is helping. There's no way. And I've seen enough and I was raised in enough, okay? <laughs> People that, are, that just use alcohol as they drink it like water, okay? It's not, not only is it not required, it's health destroying and cancer causing, okay? We don't, that's why I stopped. So tell me your story though. I'd like to hear your story, your own personal story, People that you know. I don't know. Does, and just curious too, I've mentioned this in the, in the uh, radon chapter. How many people, since like we know radon is a, a carcinogen, we know alcohol is a top level group one carcinogen. How many people you know, besides the liver thing, have ever been diagnosed uh, with a cancer? They said, oh, that was from you drinking alcohol. Probably none. That's my thought. Let's, let's just pinpoint to the liver. And liver cancer is not the only cancer that alcohol causes. No way. So... You know, I'm curious to see what your comments are, because I don't. I have a feeling it's just one of these things that it's a, it's a, it's such a big disaster just for life in general. Yet, we don't see it for what it is, and so many things that well, we're not sure. Because I've seen enough people that have cancer. And I asked them, well, do they know what happened? Do, did they know how it started? Do they know how? that it's definitely gone and won't come back and the, a lot of times the answer is well no we're not really sure about this cancer you know uh, they don't really know science doesn't really know and so they stop right there they don't but but you know the finishing of that sentence in the mind is basically i'm just going to keep on doing what i'm doing because we really don't know what the hell happened anyway and we may never know and there's so many things that are wrong with society uh, screw it that's the wrong attitude. Okay, it's, That's the wrong example to be setting for other people as well. And cancer too, which is caused by alcohol, as we've discussed or will discuss, is a condition like a disease. And it goes up and goes down depending upon how you're managing your body and how you're responding to the check engine lights that come on in your body, you know, the uh, disease symptoms. You have to bring your body back into balance because the cancer, you're always leaning towards cancer unless you are leaning towards balancing the body. And that's why it's so important to just understand these concepts. And if you've never had any alcohol to drink and you don't drink alcohol, thank you. Doesn't mean you're perfect. Just means that you have avoided the source of so many problems, like such a large percentage of problems that many people have are just completely avoided so many different problems on levels of relationships like i said that's why i stopped but um you know there's no there's no need for it there's no use for it and people that think it's required <clears throat> you need to have a heart to heart with those people and you need to question your relationship with those people and whether you want to hang around with those people that's what you need to do so again, like this video, please. If you got any kind of, of, of uh, value out of it, and please tell me, any, throw anything in the comments. If you've had cancer as a link to alcohol, let me know what it is. You had experiences where people trying to try to intervene with people, trying to get them to stop, and they wouldn't stop. Let me know what it is in the comments. In the AA, let me know. Have you seen people that like me that just stopped? 
cold tofurkey, a vegan, <laughs> vegan expression, without being prompted by anybody, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And I would love to see, and I think we are seeing it now, a movement where alcohol is on the way out. Like alcohol has had its run. And finally, it might be done because I'm seeing lots of non-alcoholic bars popping up. Let me know in, in, the, in the comments if you've been to any of these non-alcoholic bars. Have you even heard of that before? Because it's a thing. Although none of it is health promoting in my mind. None of it is health optimizing because, of course, anytime you got a drink that has plants in it, where's the fiber? It's probably not in there. Okay. And like I said, juice can be used for a cleanse and something or straight up water. But anything outside of that. That's not how, don't think that you're doing yourself a favor. It's nice that people don't go to the alcohol bars and will go to sober bars, or at least we'll have sober drinks available at the bars, but that's just a stepping stone on the way to getting rid of that habit altogether. It's like, it's like a smoking habit, right? You're constantly putting something in your lips. So you got to, I don't know, chew gum or stick something else in your mouth as a way, like, like, like a baby needs a pacifier. It's that kind of a thing. That's all it is in my mind recognize that too. Again, I don't want people going out to these non-alcoholic bars and drinking these non-alcoholic drinks and think you're doing such a great job for your health because you're not. It's junk. In almost every case, it's junk food. Just remember that. Sorry to leave such a bad note, <laughs> but there are plenty of people that don't drink or drink almost never and don't drink all the other beverages either and are just living life and enjoying and having fun. And that's what you should be able to do. And if you can't do that, you need to question why you can't do that. Maybe nobody's ever told you you have a drinking problem, but if you can't do what I just said, you need to reevaluate your life. Maybe what are your goals? What's your life purpose? Go back to the earlier chapters. Maybe you'll realize that you just need to give this stuff up now. Maybe this is your sign. I'm talking to you. This is your sign if you're watching this. And you have no real reason to drink alcohol. Just quit it. Just get rid of it. There is no way it's helping you with anything. If, and actually, I know people that have been to, to close this out to AA, and they've told me anybody who drinks alcohol on a regular basis is simply doing it to kill the pain. There's this constant pain. It's mental pain, usually, not physical pain. All right. There's a, my life. It, things pain me. Relationships pain me. Uh, I don't know. Thoughts of the past or anxieties in the future pain me. It's pain. If you can't live without learning to manage that pain, this, this gets to the root cause, right? You got to ask the root cause. Address the root cause of your pain. Don't use alcohol. Maybe you never thought about this before that you're using it in this way. Don't use alcohol as a way to manage those symptoms. You got to deal with that pain head on. And when you do, you will conquer it and it will not come back. And like I said, I have a friend who went through AA and that's what he told me about his experience through AA and he, and he did it and he's successful. People don't ever think about it in this area. So it, this is kind of a deep thinking project. I mean, it's possible to intervene with somebody and kind of time around, put them in a straight jacket and make them not drink anymore because we all said so, but better off for you if you can convince yourself, do the deep thinking work that this is a pain issue. It, it's like you're, you're, uh, you're having some kind of pains in your mind. It's hurting you. It's mental. It's intense. I know. It's just like real pain. Just like pain. Like I, I cut my arm pain only worse. I understand. I'm not minimizing this pain. I'm saying that's why it is a lot of people continue to drink this alcohol. It's become that type of a crutch. And I guess like in the past, in the way past when alcohol was a thing, maybe there were some things in life that were so painful and you couldn't do anything about it. But we don't live in that, in that era anymore. There is always something you can do about it. Information is everywhere. Knowledge is power. Dive, take a deep dive into the internet. Watch all the chapters of this book. Let me know what your favorite chapter is too, if this, if this inspires you to watch some more chapters. And of course, like I said, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Bye-bye.